I was like, okay, let's play and see. And I was like, Wah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Johan Besser here from Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you so much for clicking. <clears throat> I hope you consider subscribing if you've not already. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. So, you might be aware that last week I discovered Ren. And um, somebody suggested I do a, re a reaction or an analysis on high Ren. And I did it blindly. If you haven't seen that, um, check it out on my channel. The link's in the description. Um, I was quite surprised. I didn't know what to expect. The person who suggested it said, this guy sings about mental health issues, etc. So I was, I was prepared for that. Or I thought I was. <laughs> um, but then that nine minute video it was a trip, right? It was a total roller coaster, as that's the intention of the song. Um, the whole concept of the dark versus the light. And I like his metaphor. It's an ever, it's an eternally, what did he say? Eternally swinging pendulum from light to dark. And I loved one line that he said at the end of the song when he spoke. And he said, the brighter the light shines, the darker the shadow it casts. And I thought that was just not just poetically beautiful, but a very powerful way of describing humanity, isn't it? So I was really intrigued, and um, I've, I've been listening to the song many times since, and then have had some more suggestions from you guys, from some fans of Ren, um, to check out this song called Chalk Outlines, um, with uh, Chinchilla, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and I must say that I have watched it once. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was so um, nervous about how overwhelmed I was the first time that I decided to check the song out at least one time before I discuss it with you guys. So I have watched it once, um, not in any great detail. So let's listen to that together and see what we can take from this song as a song in terms of how it was written, what it says. So musically, structure-wise, is it a good, well-written song? Um, what does it say? How does it connect to me emotionally? And how is the singing? Because obviously this is a channel all about singing and the human voice. So I like to analyze and say, why do I think things make me feel the way they do? Why does a certain element in a song touch me deeply? Or why do I feel untouched? even if a song is beautiful. So let's listen together. And then also, of course, this is a duet. So there's, there's the dynamic between two different artists and two different voices to chat about. So I'm keen. Let's go. Interesting, the sort of droning sound and the underground dungeon vibes again. Every sound is so intentional. And an electric guitar this time. Someone else in the morning 
So take this one, wash it down and you'll be fine And walk around in the floating chalk outline Right, so I love how everything is so intentional in the filming, in the production of the clip visually and the sound. Um, he definitely has a way to get you hooked pretty early on <clears throat> in the video, even before there's any music. Um, and again, this is live, right? Just like High Ren, um, he was sitting there playing in that acoustic space. The dungeony vibe, like I said, which this is similar. Um, and it's interesting, it almost looks like he's, when I look at his eyes in one particular moment, it looked like he's listening to the sound as it sort of reverberates down the hallways there or whatever. So it's interesting because it's, um, it's not like a reverb or a roomy kind of acoustic or whatever that's put on in a studio. It is the actual sound of the place that he's sitting and producing the sound from there and then what happens to the sound. So it's just a very refreshing, interesting way to do it. I love it. Um, then he sings. Not like in High Ren where he was basically rapping or talking. Um, e major, C sharp minor. It's the normal male range there. And I must say... A melody that's very easy to listen to in terms of it's a familiar it's familiar types of um, intervals right because what makes a melody is the distance between each following pitch da 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 that's very specific but that kind of melody is very familiar it's sort of like a pop pop melody um and again like in the high rain i said i can hear every word he says which is really important i mean songs are stories and the stories are in the words and if you can't hear the words then you can't follow the song and what i loved about high rain is that i could follow the song f at on a first listen never heard it before it was very quick right the words but I could still follow because it was so clear. There was so much energy, which is breath flowing through every single syllable, vowels and consonants, that I had no doubt what he was talking about. And now this is even easier because it's slow paced, but he's still very, very clear and very intentional. Um, and then he doesn't sing in a way that somebody might, sing on the voice or on american idol <laughs> he's not trying to produce a kind of sound that he thinks will please people do you know what i mean he's, he's expressing it the way he feels it um even the the kind of sound that he makes which is it's refreshing isn't it somebody not trying to be like every other pop singer so let's keep going So it goes, let it be In the gallows, a balance on my toes So I can breathe But little by little, bit by bit I push it back down with a new habit If not for long, just for a Okay, before the girl sings, um, I didn't talk about the subject matter. Obviously, like I said, it's very clear what the song is about. Um, floating chalk outlines. What a cool line. To me, I don't know, maybe I'll do some more research, but to me, chalk outlines, you know, sounds like how they draw an outline around a corpse when there was an accident or a death. 
um, then they outline where the body was laying. Um, so that to me, I think, is what this is about. And then, of course, the, the lines like, just swallow this down, it'll make you feel better. Um, I love the opening line where he said, I'm singing from, or I'm, I've crawled into the bed and I hope when I wake up I'm somebody else. So clearly, still, it's about the struggle, the struggle to find ourselves, um, to find out who we really are, and to find a way to navigate through everything that life throws at us. Um, and this... Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. That's high, um, you know, G sharps and A's. And the kind of sound, again, it's not force, but it's like a very intentionally strong, almost pushed sound. Um, because it's the emotion of the lyric that is represented in the sound. But again, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, on the guitar, it's like a pop song. <laughs> But, but not. Don't cry, cause there's a pill for everything. Take this one, wash it down, and you'll be fine. Love that song. So, love the second chorus where they sang in duet. Um, sort of in thirds, which is a very straightforward, um, normal, predictable kind of harmonizing. But it's musically so pleasing to listen to. And then, of course, her sound um, is quite different to his. Not just the fact that she's a female vocal and he's a male vocal, but um, she sings seemingly with a little bit more um, sensitivity in the sound. I still feel the text, I still feel the lyric through her sound, but it's not as raw, um, sort of, yeah, raw and untouched as, as his sound is. She sings like a, um, a very skilled singer with, yeah, like sensitivity. And then in the bridge, I think, the part of the song that they're now, um, they sing in unison. She just doubles him on the octave, um, but you can hardly hear her. And I think that's intentional. It's just like an like a outline to what he's singing. Um, and now she goes to these high 
places so beautifully, so sensitively. She has really good control of her voice. She does exactly what she wants, and she does it, yeah, with such control. So I think that's beautiful. But little by little, bit by bit, I'll push it back down with a new habit. If not for long, just for a while, I'll bury myself with a great big smile. Oh my, my, oh my, my, we trace ourselves in the chalk outlines. Oh my, my, oh my, my, we raise ourselves in these chalk Nice. It's over. And then she goes, oh my, my, on the high E. Full voice, so powerful, and uh, again, a little bit more raw sound. So that, that to me just confirms the point that I made, that she has really good control of her voice. Um, he seems, please hear me, Ren fans, I'm not saying he's not trained and he's not skilled at all. He seems like somebody who's just like a self-taught singer. He just sings. He just makes whatever sound he wants to make. And he's not concerned with... He doesn't seem concerned with the technical aspects of it or whatever. He just he makes a sound that he feels. That's it. Um, I mean, pitch-wise, here and there, it's not so accurate. But it's like, who cares? I don't care. I mean, I'm very tuned into pitch, right, with singers, because that's part of my world. But it doesn't matter. Even in their duet in the last part, the, in the a cappella part, which is when he did stop playing the guitar, um, there were pitch issues, I guess you could say. But it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't take anything away from the music. It doesn't take anything away from their performance and this moment that they're creating. Um, but man, she sang those high is Kelly Clarkson style, like full, full, full voice. Um, really good. Yeah, so I, this song is a little bit more relatable to, to me personally because of the style of writing. Like I said, it's like pop melodies, like a pop song structure in a sense. Um, really, really enjoyable musically for me enjoyable to listen to um, and I think it is another brilliantly written song by Ren um, and I think he chose the right singer to to sing along with him to make the song come alive such intelligent lyrics but not pretentious I also found that in High Ren um, there's lots of words there I mean that's like a seven minute song and it's I can't remember now exactly, but there's not a lot that is repeated. It's all the time. It's a new conversation, right, between the light and the dark. So many words, but even there, such clever words. Clever is a not a good enough word. Super intelligent. The choice of words to describe what he's feeling and what he's trying to say. Um, but it doesn't feel pretentious. Um, I've worked with songwriters who just literally go on Pinterest to look for a very unusual word. Fine, you can do that. But sometimes then when you find those kinds of words in lyrics and songs, you're like, really? <laughs> is it necessary for such a strange word that nobody knows what it is? Um, so intelligent lyrics, but not pretentious. So for me, that means brilliant songwriting. It really is. Um, I'm a fan. Ren's got a new fan. Thank you for spending the time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. And until next time, please take care of yourself. Before you go, let me just quickly remind you of two exciting things that is part of our company. The one is a podcast on Spotify, free for everybody, called Voice Matters with Johan Bester. And the second is that we now have a Discord server, Charisma Forming Arts Discord server. I would love it if you would consider joining our community there. The links are in the description.